TV, 95X, or Good Karma Brands. And with a little bit of luck, we've got Dick Zondega on the other end of the microphone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, John. All right. We do have uh, uh, Dick with us. And Dick, right off the bat, I think you mentioned something last week. Is this the last week of the program? It is the last week. Um, Memorial Day is coming up, and we go from uh, is it late April through uh, just before Memorial Day. So, okay. yeah, so this is the last Garden Doctor show of the spring. All right. So, people, you can call up at 885-4446-1920, 885-4446 to get on the air with the uh, Garden Doctor, Dick Zondag. And before we go to the phones, Dick, tell us what's happening at the store. Well, we're stocked with a lot of different things, uh, perennials, uh, annuals, and I brought roses along today. If you're uh, watching on Daily Dodge, uh, I've got uh, two of the shrub roses, uh, knockout roses. I've got a double red and a double pink, and they're just beautiful. They're, they bloom all summer long. They, every time they get a new flush of growth, they'll get a, a new set of flowers. So when uh, the flowers start to to go down, you 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 uh, disbud them. You take the dead flowers off. They put on another flush of growth, and you get more uh, flowers. They're not for cutting. I did bring along some hybrid teas, also one called um, Enchanted Peace. It's a it's a new variety that uh, has, must have peace in its background as far as uh, breeding, and it has a pink edge with a golden yellow flower. And then I brought another one along called Paradise, which is sort of a lavender colored. The roses come in a lot of different colors, you know, all the way from white through reds, pinks, uh, purples, um, all co all different colors. And we've got a beautiful selection. They're as nice this year as they've ever been. Um, and uh, they're available in the garden center. Um, we also have a lot of containers. If you're looking for a, an accent, uh, um, an accent container in front of your house. Uh, uh, we've got lots of large, medium, and small containers, so you can plant them and have uh, color around your door or wherever you want to have that color. And so, uh, and then beside that, we have the the uh, uh, greenhouses full of annuals that are in bloom and. Plant them now, and you'll have color all summer long, plus all the different perennials that you can buy. We've got hundreds of different varieties and species of perennials, and our uh, container nursery is open now, and uh, there again, we've got a, a large selection of nursery stock as you find anywhere in this area. So if you're landscaping a house, you know, bring a picture or a drawing along. We can help you you need if it's in the sun or shade you got to pick different plants and our people in the store know what they're talking about so you can uh, get your uh, um, get your plants there um, wow. strawberries uh, we still have some strawberries left I planted strawberries and uh, on in my new yard and uh, they're within a couple of weeks of just being in abundant uh, uh, Abundant, uh, lots and lots and lots of strawberries. So, um, you know, it's still time to plant those. All right. So we got lots of stuff to sell and um, a good staff to talk to, and uh, we'll, we'll welcome anybody that comes in. Okay. Well, let's go to the phones. We already have two listeners. I want to uh, start the program off. Good morning. You're on the Garden Doctor with Dick Zonday. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, rhubarb plant. I've got an old rhubarb plant and uh, I I took some of it off I believe it was a year or two ago Okay. I got some new transplants off of it they haven't done very well and I'd like to possibly uh, do that again because that rhubarb plant didn't didn't have a, didn't bear a lot of fruit this year. Okay. What, so, what am I doing wrong or what, what should I do? So are they in the full sunlight at yes. least a half a day? Uh, yes, at least. Okay, the so there, that's that's perfect. I mean, uh, rhubarb it likes to be out in the sunlight. Yeah, um, I also put, put some cow manure around them uh, early this spring. Okay. Not, not a bunch of it, but uh, a fair amount. Well, you can work that into the ground, or you can put some uh, regular uh, garden fertilizer around it. Rhubarb okay. is a heavy feeder, and if 
you're getting a lot of flowers, that means that the rhubarb is under stress. It's either got in a place where it isn't well drained. If you've got a, you know, a spot where water sits for a while, that doesn't like that. Um, but it does like to have a lot of fertility. So, um, you know, using uh, cow manure or cow compost is okay, but it's also good to put some, maybe put some uh, fertilizer around it too. And How about get it uh, corn fertilizer, like 92330, or is that? Yeah, that's that's okay with rhubarb and with asparagus. It's not good for the garden, but it's good for a rhubarb because well, the thing you want to grow is a vegetative part of the plant, the stalks, and so um, okay. that would help also. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. All right. Thank you for the call. We'll go to the other line. You are on the air with Dig Sondag, the garden doctor. Hi. I got a. I have a couple questions. Sure. First one is, uh, I noticed that seed plant um, packages, there's a sell-by date. Right. Is that because, um, say, after the first year, they, they don't perform as well? No. It's because that's the way we have to label them by law. Um, okay. If you store seeds um, in, a dry, uh, in a dry environment, um, in a moss-proof container, um, seeds will last a long time. We actually had some... Seeds, when I had our centennial about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 14 years ago, that we found in the stock seed drawer that was from way back in the 1930s, and over half of that seed, uh, some of the tomatoes and things like that were still viable. So um, th that is strictly a government requirement. You know, you can only pack seed uh, that has a sale-by date on it. So it's packed for spring and we're starting to pack next year's seeds already so it's packed for spring 22 sale by december of 22 so we have to repackage our seed every year okay so. and the second question is when is the last time i could or date i guess i can do a spring fertilizer in my lawn uh, you're getting close to it because uh when it starts to get warm outside, the grass kind of goes semi-dormant, and if you're fertilizing it when the plant is going dormant, um, you're favoring the weeds in the lawn. So I would say if you haven't fertilized, you can still get it. We've got some cool weather coming in, and you can um, the, the, the grass will benefit from that. Uh, but I would say in another week or so, it's probably not, not a good idea to fertilize your lawn until probably the end of, well, the end of October. No, no. The end of August, the beginning of September, when it starts to get cool again, because the grass mainly grows in the spring and in the fall. And so when you're fertilizing uh, uh, your grass, you want to fertilize it when it first starts to grow. So um, I did apply some fertilizer to my lawn about a week and a half ago, uh, but I got a new lawn that's really thin, and uh, uh, with that rain that we got a a few days, uh, oh, about a week ago, it just really made the grass grow and uh, greened it up. So um, if you're going to apply it, I would do it immediately, but then not until probably the end of August. All right. Thank you for your help. Thank you for calling. And thank you for your call. 885-4446-1920-885-4446. want to remind you, too, again, that it, uh, not only is... Uh, the Garden Doctor here on WBEV Radio, but also our video stream at DailyDodge.com if you want to check that out. Now let's go to our next caller. You're on the air with Dick Sondag. Good morning. I am doing some intense weeding in my uh, landscaping flower bed. Right. And for the quack roots, if I get, I mean, I keep turning the dirt till I don't find any more quack roots. Will that still come back? You probably won't be able to get them all out. <laughs> uh, quack is a pretty invasive uh, weed. Um, the the better way to do it now is there anything else in your? There's just a few flowers. But... Um, what I would do is probably wait another week or ten days to see if it starts to regrow. And if it does, then hit it with Roundup. Put a pail over the plants that you want to uh -huh. save. Pretty invasive. And I had <laughs> a few uh, sprigs in my uh, strawberry. Um, my strawberry patch, and I dug around and tried to get the whole thing, but some of the, you know, the little rhizomes that had come off the mother plant uh, stayed behind. Um, I think I'm going to get a paintbrush and start what, painting. What about, like, for the thistles and dandelions? Round up on there, too? Because it, it had thistles. 
Yeah, dandelions that, and, and uh, yeah, thistles, plants. it'll take care of thistles and dandelions also. But right. remember, you, you, it'll take care of anything that's in the garden. Right, right. So you got to be really careful. But like you, you said, not, you know, I've been really working out there because the ground dug up so nice now. Sure, And yeah. uh, like you said, let it lay for 7 to 10 days, see what comes up, spray it before you mulch it or anything. Yep, yep. And then, okay, I can do that. Yep, <laughs> Thanks, and, bye. Yep. All right, thank you very much for your call. Let's go to the other line. You're on the air with the garden doctor. Good morning. Good morning. I have two problems. Number one, my son-in-law got too close to a small lilac bush and damaged one of the branches, and somebody said I should have just taped it. Well, I broke it off, and now I have it soaking in water, and it's about six inches, a little more than six inches, and it has a fork on it where one branch is going one way and the other branch is going the other way. I don't know if I should put root tone on there and stick it in the ground and see if it will root or what should I do with it. Lilacs are very difficult to root, so I wouldn't waste my time trying to do that. Wouldn't. Um, I should have just taped it, huh? Yeah, or if if you broke it off, um, get a pruning shears and, and, and prune it so you've got a smooth cut because... Um, if you if you just ripped it off or you yeah, you, know, you leave anything off. there, um, it won't heal over as nicely no. as it, if you cut you make make a nice smooth cut. Yeah, my grandpa used to take the axe and chop down to get roots out and dig it out. Yeah. And then my other problem is I bought a turk lily in member of my sister's husband. Okay. And she was here last year and it was blooming. And she wanted a piece of it, so I dug some out and gave it to her, and she said it never bloomed. Mine is re almost done blooming now, Yeah. and I don't know if I should wait until the leaves dry to dig some out for her or just go buy another one. They're not that expensive. Yeah, it's a Turk's cap is what it's called, the Turk's cap lily. Um, probably better to wait until the, the stem dies down, but sometimes... You know, if you take a piece off and you plant it and it grows and it doesn't flower, it's because right. there's not enough carbohydrates uh, stored up right. in the bulb. And so it, if it doesn't blossom the first year and you fertilize it um, so that it grows well and stuff, it'll probably blossom the second year. That was the Hungarian lilac. I've had it three years now, and it hasn't blossomed. Um do some root pruning, take a shovel and drive it in the ground around the plant, um, and that should, um, you know, uh, don't fertilize it because fertilization no, no. of a plant will make it stay juvenile and then it won't blossom. But I would say take a, take a shovel and about six inches to a foot uh, away from the plant, just drive it into the ground and cut some of the roots and that'll put a little stress on the plant and it'll probably okay. blossom next year. Somebody suggested using some alkaline or something soil. No, uh, lilacs like a sweet soil. Yeah. And so what you want to do is put lime around them. Oh, lime. Yep. Oh, okay. I have a bag of that. Yep. Just put yeah. lime around okay. it, and work it into the soil, and like I said, cut some of the roots and that. Yeah. That will almost guarantee you'll get Be flowers. Because next the year. other two have had three blossoms on this year. But this one didn't have anything. Yep. Well, you got to put it under a little bit of stress, and that okay. will cause it to go into its adult flowering stage. Oh, I'll do that, and thank you so much. Yep. Bye -bye. Thank you for calling. Right. Thank you for your call. You're listening to The Garden Doctor here on WBEV, streaming live on DailyDodge.com. 885-4446 is the number to call. Let's go back to the phones. You're on the air with Dick Zondag. Good morning. Uh, my petunias, after I plant them, they get... When they're growing, they get really spindly, and I heard that if you trim them back, they will spread out. Yes. You know, they'll get more bushier. That's true, because um, what happens then is the plant will sprout more branches closer to the ground, and I would say you can cut them back to probably four or five inches so that you got several leaves left, because in the axle of every leaf, another uh, branch can come out, and that oh. definitely helps them to uh, spread out. Um, okay. Um, I was afraid to do that. Oh, I no. thought I'll lose them all. You won't but lose any of thank them. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay. All right. 
Thank you for your call, 885-4446, and what's that? 885-4446, Dick. With that last caller, um, water and fertilize it right after you uh, trim them back, and they'll come back with gangbusters. And I was going to say, too, with petunias, when you get towards fall and they start to look a little ratty, you can do the same thing. Just cut um, the majority of those uh, um, stems off, and they will re- uh, it takes them about two weeks to come back into blossom, but on a, petunia is an annual. When it goes, for, when it has some viable seeds made, it's done its duty, and then it starts to go downhill. So, cut the, the spent blossoms off and fertilize it again, and it'll be back in bloom um, in early fall. Eight eight five four 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 six. Both lines are open. Dick, I was going to ask you, we had that uh, long rain. Was it Sunday, I believe? Yep. It just kept raining and raining and yep. raining. I left my plants out on the deck to get all that rain. Is that bad? Or, no, it's Or great. just the more rain, the better? And, no. Yeah, I think of like the, you know, getting maybe too muddy and whatnot, but apparently not. Huh? No, no. Um, if you've got the right medium, the excess water, if you've got too much water, will flow through the plant uh, oh, okay. the container that you've got in and they, actually that's good for them because it gets them uh, um, used to being outside in that rain and uh, that's not going to hurt them at all. 885 uh, Dick of course you are a uh, professional in the world of gardening and uh, whatnot. Uh, uh, tell us about what you have at your personal home because I know but, it's got to be. T- is it tough to do gardening on the weekends after you've been working on it all week? No, I actually go when I get home. Uh, I I go out in the yard and mow okay. the lawn. You know, we planted some of the uh, daffodils and things that we didn't have pictures of in the in on the internet, and they came into bloom this year. So mm. we took some pictures, and I've already uh, put um, perf- uh, profusion zinnias between the. Um, between the uh, uh, the leaves of the daffodils, because you want to let the leaves on those fall bl- uh, planted bulbs, the spring flowering bulbs, because they need to put st- stuff back in. They need to put carbohydrates back into the bulbs so that they'll flower next year. So it'll start to look a little um, ready in a, in another three weeks. Uh, the, but when the leaves start to die back with the tulips, they do separate from the bulbs so you know when your tulips start leaves start to turn brown you can grab a hold of them and just give them a a a light jerk and if they come loose from the bulb that means that you can take the those uh um those tops off and like i said i planted the the uh, annuals between them because that way by the time the uh the, the bulbs are are ripened they're ready to go the the annuals are are growing and uh, will will fill in in a real big hurry, but no, I do a lot of landscaping. In fact, I planted some asparagus yesterday. Uh, my my garden is is still in the its infancy, so uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was pretty hot out yesterday to do that. But uh, I wanted to get them in in case it rained last night, and of course it didn't rain last <laughs> night. When so. you're prepared for it, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I I dug the trench and put the asparagus in and covered. They're covered with a small layer now, wait until they start to grow, and then I just keep backfilling. And the rest of my garden will go in this weekend. Um, So the soil is nice and warm. The seeds will come up fast, and it'll be just as good uh, come fall in production as those that had them in a month ago. Dig Zundag up close and personal. Folks, let's go back to the phones. Oh, we lost the caller. 885-4446-1920-885-4446. Uh, I was going to ask you, too, about, uh, well, I will hold that thought because we do have another caller checking in. And let's go to the phones. You're on the air with uh, Dig Zondag, the garden doctor. Yeah, I have a fern peony and it's done blossoming already. Okay. Can I t- take an, uh, the tops where the blossoms were? Can I pinch them off? Oh, yes. Yeah, you can take them off. It's probably not going to set... Um, set seed anyway, and um, and then if it does, um, you know the the plant will put everything back into the the, the root system because uh, the fernley peonies are very slow growing. Um, that's why they're so expensive because it takes 
several years to get a plant big enough to divide, and so, uh, but those front leaf peonies are really pretty. Will it re-bottom if I pinch those things off? No. Nope, no. you get one set of blossoms with peonies, and once they're done, they're done, but the, the fern leaf uh, part of it is kind of pretty in the landscape, and you got to leave it on because if you cut it off, you're probably not going to have um, flowers next year, but you can cut the blossom off. You can disbud it, and that way all the strength from those leaves will go into the root system and probably give you a better display next year. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your call. Let's go to the other line. You're on the air with the garden doctor. I was wondering, can I still plant tulip and gladiola bulbs, or should I save them till next year? If you have In tulips, yeah. If you have tulips, they're probably not going to be worth much because uh, tulips are planted in the fall. Glads, yes, for sure. Glads should okay. be planted right now. And if you've okay. got really big glads, you know, if you've got really big bulbs, you can actually cut them in half or cut them okay. in quarters because glads are stem. Some, put oh. something around them so the squirrels don't dig the bulbs out and plant them in the neighbor's yard. Uh, the only thing I know that really works is a shotgun. <laughs> what? <laughs> the only thing that really works on squirrels is a shotgun. <laughs> oh, I don't have one, though. <laughs> no, okay, um, thank you so much. There are, there are repellents that you can have put. Have a good day. Yeah, you, there, are, there are repellents that you can use for uh, for rodents, but, um, yeah. Those uh, squirrels are very brash animals, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are, okay. although they're kind of cute. Yeah, I too. guess so. You know, sure. we're, our bird feeder out and back... Uh, some of the, the, the sparrows seem to like to throw all the seeds off the plant, off the uh, the bird feeder yes. onto the ground, and yep. we get squirrels and chipmunks and things like that that come and they sit on their hind legs and eat those seeds, and they're kind of cute to watch. I remember being in a gift shop or something. There was a T-shirt that has a picture of a squirrel knocking on a window, saying, "You're out of bird seed." <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, they do tend to go up the bird seed, uh, the 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 stalk, the stake that it's on. But we fixed those. Uh, yeah. We put some. Uh, we cut a, you know a couple of uh, milk jugs, the gallon okay. milk jugs, and put them so that uh, you cut a hole in the bottom and then you just slip them on that uh, on that thing and that discourages them. We haven't had any squirrels on our on our bird feeders, but they do uh, feed on the ground so. All right. Well, let's uh, go to the phones. We've got time for at least one more caller. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes. I have some allium. Okay. And they're about done blossoming okay. now. Should I cut those seed heads off like you would a tulip? Yes. Um, they, they probably will produce seed because they're, they're pretty uh, um, fertile. So um, if you're not going to use the seed, just cut them off, and the, that way they'll put the leaves will put all the energy into the into the bulbs. So, yes, I would definitely do that. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you very much. Last call for callers, 885-4446-1920, 4446 If you have a last-minute uh, uh, question for Dick Zondag, and again, a reminder, uh, Dick is on video, too, the video stream on DailyDodge.com. And, again, we remind folks, too, this is the last garden doctor program of the spring yep. session sure went fast didn't it yeah it did go fast wow. this year i guess it's because we're doing things in person now yes trying to get over that that covid hangover that we have and get back to a normal life where we can chuck those uh things into the wastebasket right. and walk around <laughs> like we should did you, have but any, anyway. did you have any creative face masks that had uh, a saying on it or anything? I did not. Okay. I did not. Standard I had, white or standard blue? I it? had a black one, actually. Oh, the black one, okay. Yep, and I had I actually had two. Nice. My well, wife yeah. would uh, take one off and <laughs> and wash it once in a while. Well, sure, you got to do that. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. we got time. About a minute for one more call. Go ahead. Yeah, I bought three uh, maple trees. They're root maples, okay. and they're growing very well. Do I pull off any of them small branches on the stems? or? What I would do is um, leave them on because they will grow the diameter of that trunk. And I would leave them on until they get to be about the diameter of a pencil or maybe a little bit bigger. And then you want to cut, cut them off because the, the tree does not grow higher 
in the trunk. The, all the, the upward growth comes in the top of the tree. And so if a, if a branch is two feet off the ground and your, your tree is four feet tall, that branch will be two feet off the ground 20 years from now. So you want to leave them on to get the tree established to start getting some trunk diameter, but when they get about the size of a pencil or a little bit bigger than that, um, you go and you cut them off as close to the trunk as you can without damaging that little collar. If you look close right next to the trunk, there's a little collar, and that's the area of cell division that will roll over that cut surface. So you don't want to damage that, but you want to get it quite close to the trunk, and then, uh, and then your tree will be just fine. And do you, do you cut the top off or no. to make it? Out or no, it'll fill out naturally. Um, the the top of the tree in a shade tree is quite important to keep a leader as high as high as you can, so that you don't um, have trouble with the uh, uh, branch. Uh, you know, if you've got a bad crotch six feet above the ground, you're going to have trouble. So you want to keep a leader as long as possible in a shade tree, which is different than a fruit tree. But um, uh, keep that that leader as far as as long as possible and the branches will come. You know, a lot of our trees we sell as whips, you know, where they don't have any branches, and um, that's the best way to, to start a tree. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much. Yep. And that to concludes the last question. The Anyone last ask? question of 2021. <laughs> For the spring session. And, again, what's happening at the store, Dick? Okay. Well, first off, we want to thank you, John, and all people at WBV, WBEV and WXRO and Bill McCollum especially, he's been our sales rep forever, and, you know, we think a lot of Bill. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, uh, we've got lots of roses that are potted and growing, and they're beautiful. I mean, I, I think they're as nice as we've ever had. We do grow them ourselves, so uh, we take the bare root roses and pot them up and, and grow them ourselves. Um, we've also got a lot of annuals, uh, perennials, and uh, our container nursery is open. So we've got almost all of the things that you'd ever need for your landscape and your garden. We still have a very good supply of seeds, and like I said, I'm going to be planting my garden probably Memorial Day. All right. So um, yeah. store hours? Store hours in Randolph, um, 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday. The stores in Masson and Stevens Point, it's 8.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, um, 8 30 to 4 on Saturday and 10 to 3 on Sunday. Of course, Randolph is never open on Sunday. Dig Sunday, always a pleasure uh, yep. visiting with you. And, and uh, good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we'll see you in the fall. Thank you, John, and I hope so too. All right. The preceding program was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the program are solely that of John Garden Center, not WBEV 95X or Good Karma Brands. <laughs>